Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Uh, Jehonathan Bentovich, Bentwich, um, and I'm the father of um, uh, the new uh, God's Physics uh, paradigm for the 21st century. There's a book of mine that uh, came out, there's been a few presentations, uh, quite a few presentations, over uh, 50 peer-reviewed scientific articles uh, published, uh, two special issues. Uh, I opened international physics conferences about this new paradigm of 21st century. And I'm here to um, actually call all cosmologists, astronomers, experimental physicists, uh, especially as astronomers and cosmologists, to carry out um, an urgent validation, empirical validation, experimental validation of this new God's physics uh, paradigm. Previously, it's been uh, published also as the computational unified field theory. Um, uh, named so after Einstein's uh, uh, famous quest for unifying field theory. And in fact, this new God's physics um, uh, paradigm uh, fulfills Einstein's quest. I've written about that uh, as well. Uh, so let me explain briefly uh, where we stand right now uh, and why this experimental validation, which I will um, uh, elaborate uh, what it entails and when it has to take place, why is this so significant? We stand now at a point that may be equivalent to, uh, uh, quite equivalent or almost uh, precisely equivalent to Einstein's um, uh, verification uh, in 1919, Eddington's famous uh, experimental uh, validation of Einstein's uh, critical uh, prediction regarding his um, then new uh, uh, relativity theory. Uh, and why do I say that the situation right now of the state of uh, theoretical physics right now is um, almost um, identical with the state of physics about 100 years ago? Because now as then, uh, the two pillars of, uh, of uh, the old paradigm, uh, the old paradigm of relativity theory and quantum mechanics, um, and the old paradigm in those uh, 50 plus uh, peer-reviewed articles, uh, scientific articles that have been published, I call that uh, old paradigm the material causal paradigm because the basic assumption of that old paradigm, the material causal paradigm, is that you can explain any phenomena in the universe and actually the origination of the universe, its, uh, its evolution, its dynamics, uh, is assumed by the old paradigm, the old material causal paradigm, to arise from uh, direct or indirect physical interactions between uh, certain uh, material entities. In the case of relativity theory, for example, the Big Bang uh, model assumes that there was a, an initial nuclear Big Bang uh, event and that uh, uh, created the suns, the galaxies, mass, uh, energy, uh, etc. Um, and Einstein's uh, equations in general relativity theory assume that the evolution of the universe is the result of the interaction between certain massive objects and their curvature of space-time uh, which then um, uh, determines the traveling pathways of those massive and other less massive objects. And in quantum mechanics, again, the same material causal paradigm, old paradigm, assumes that uh, any, uh, the, the uh, behavior of any subatomic, subatomical target uh, particle or entity uh, can be um, uh, uh, measured uh, or determined based on the direct physical interaction between that uh, targets um, subatomic uh, um, uh, entities probability wave function and the corresponding uh, subatomic probe element uh, and the, the, the direct interaction between them between them causes the collapse um, or assumed collapse of the probability wave function of the target element into a singular complementary uh, space energy time mass value so that's the old material causal paradigm and that old material causal paradigm essentially assumes that the universe functions originates evolves and uh, essentially behaves based on direct or indirect uh, material causal interactions between uh, relativistic or quantum subatomic particles and that can explain the whole behavior dynamics and evolution of the universe the problem is, and I'm again referring to the, the, um, the equivalence of the situation that we are in right now to what happened 100 years ago. So um, the problem is that uh, science right now, the old material causal paradigm, first of all, the two pillars of the old material causal paradigm, 
seem to contradict each other. Relativity theory and quantum mechanics are uh, seemingly at least contradictory of each other. Uh, for example, uh, in relativity theory, we have a, a clear cause and effect um, uh, situation or, or dynamics. Uh, if I give that example, many people give that example, if the sun, um, uh, God forbid, was extinguished at this point in time, it would take about eight minutes for the last uh, light ray from the sun to reach us. So there is a cause and effect. There is a lapse of time uh, or a delay between the event of the sun being extinguished and the, 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 the last uh, light ray, t the time that it would take the light ray to reach us. There is a limit of the constancy of the speed of light and there is a cause and effect relationship. When we take an equivalent situation of two entangled particles uh, that are separated uh, supposedly by those eight minutes and we make a measurement in one of them, uh, and that was verified obviously in, in Bell's uh, um, experiment, the, the values, uh, the complementary values of the other entangled particles that are separated by those uh, equivalent eight minutes of light uh, uh, traveling uh, distance, uh, it affects the, other, uh, the measurement of the other entangled particle instantaneously. So that's obviously a contradiction between relativity theory and quantum mechanics, and there's other el elements, but it's clear that the two pillars of the old material causal paradigm, relativity theory and quantum mechanics, seem contradictory of each other. Uh, in addition, the uh, old uh, material causal paradigm cannot account for up to 95% uh, of all the mass and energy in the universe. Uh, they're assumed to comprise dark matter and dark energy, but yet for two, two um, uh, entire decades, uh, numerous attempts have been made to try and detect directly that uh, those uh, purely hypothetical uh, dark matter, dark energy concepts, and they've not been identified, they've not been detected. So that remains an elusive phenomena, which is completely hypothetical. Now let's revert back to the situation where Einstein's general relativity theory was necessary to make a paradigmatic shift, which is exactly equivalent to the situation right now. By the way, ba back then as well, as people know, um, there was a contradiction between Maxwell's ele electromagnetic um, um, uh, wave theory and uh, Newtonian mechanics, a like between the, the contradiction of relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Back then also, the model Newtonian mechanics, classical mechanics, relied on the ether concept, which is very similar to what's happening with dark matter, dark energy, because the ether concept was a purely hypothetical concept, like dark matter, dark energy. And for a long time, many experiments, including the Michelson-Morley experiment and other experiments, tried to verify, tried to detect the ether um, element. And none of them was able to do so in the same manner that n no, no experiment to date, after two decades of experimentation, has been able to detect, directly verify the presence of dark matter, dark energy. And the great Einstein came along and he said, okay, if you cannot detect the ether element, and n despite numerous attempts to do so, we have to cancel it. We have to, to discard it. He called it a, a superfluous, non-existent. And then he came up with his relativity theory. Now, the, the reason that I'm bringing this up because, is because, as we uh, all know, Thomas Kuhn, the, the, the famous philosopher of science, uh, explained and analyzed how science evolves and how science evolves in any given discipline. And he identified the fact that science evolves by alternating phases. There is a phase of standard science, which is essentially uh, a, a situation in which, let's say, we're under the um, paradigm of general relativity theory, or quantum mechanics, or Newtonian mechanics. For a while, that paradigm works. For a while, the old material paradigm, old material causal paradigm of relativity theory and quantum mechanics, which assumes that everything functions as, as a, a, um, uh, a result of cause and effect interactions, direct physical interactions, whether at the relativistic level or quantum level, that old paradigm, according to Thomas Kuhn, functions quite well for a while, and then it stops functioning very well. Then you start having these oddities. One is the contradiction between the two pillars of the old paradigm, let's say relativity theory and quantum mechanics, or electromagnetic uh, theory, Max Maxwellian's electromagnetic theory and Newtonian mechanics. And then you have phenomena which are key, central, and cannot be explained by the old paradigm. 
ether concept back in, in pre-Einstein's um, uh, era or Newtonian mechanics era. And right now, dark matter, dark energy cannot be explained by the old paradigm. And they cannot be detected. And so there's a major problem because what that means is that up to 95% of, of all the matter and energy in the universe simply cannot be detected. And, and quite frankly, we have to admit, does not exist. So the old model, uh, uh, um, the old paradigm, the old material causal paradigm, is no longer sufficient to explain the universe. And that's when Thomas Kuhn uh, uh, discovered that science then undergoes a paradigmatic shift. It goes a leap. It, it, it discovers a new paradigm, which is much more expensive and much more uh, elaborate and can resolve the apparent inconsistencies in the old paradigm. In this case, the new God's physics paradigm or the computational unified field theory, it's the same thing, just different names, the new God's physics paradigm is able, was able to shown, was, was shown able, capable of resolving the apparent contradiction between relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And I won't go into this in, in this presentation, but key elements of both relativity theory and quantum mechanics have been embedded in the key, what's called universal computational formula, which stands at the heart of this new God's physics paradigm. So Thomas Kuhn tells us, when we get to that point, where the old paradigm doesn't work any longer. And there is uh, contradictions at the basis of it uh, between the two pillars of the old paradigm like relativity theory and quantum mechanics. You have major phenomena uh, that cannot be explained. The accelerated expansion of the universe is assumed to be uh, explained or the only way that the old paradigm, the old material causal paradigm, can somehow try to explain the accelerated rate of the, the, the um, expansion of the universe it relies on those non-existent, purely hypothetical 95% of all the mass and energy in the universe, which is dark matter, dark energy, completely hypothetical concepts, cannot be verified, so we have to move on, we have to discard them. And actually, in one of those articles that I've written, I stated the same thing that Einstein stated. Could dark matter, dark energy be superfluous? Einstein asked, could the ether, or he actually stated, the ether concept is superfluous. And I state the same thing. Dark matter, dark energy are non-existent. They're purely hypothetical. They cannot be verified. And we have to discard them. We have to expand into this new God's physics paradigm. So the new God's physics paradigm, and this is, conforms to what Thomas Kuhn was teaching us, uh, that is that the old, uh, when you have a situation that the old standard paradigm, in this case the old material causal paradigm, doesn't work any longer. There's contradictions. It cannot explain where up to 95% of the, all the matter and energy in the universe exists, where does it exist, does it exist, cannot explain that, we have to move on to a new paradigm and that comprises the paradigmatic shift. A change or a shift from the old paradigm, standard paradigm, in this case material causal paradigm, to the new God's physics paradigm. That's the point where we are at, uh, right now. And I'm calling now, as I did in uh, a few articles, published, there's just been now a special issue published with uh, 17 articles by an international scientific um, uh, journal um, describing uh, and uh, um, describing the, the intricacies of this new God's physics paradigm, um, showing us that it uh, expands our understanding and knowledge of the universe much broader than the old material causal paradigm. It resolves the inconsistencies. Um, it discards dark matter, dark energy. It opens completely new, exciting possibilities um, of reversal of time, of uh, transcending the speed of light barrier, uh, of the possibility to unify relativity theory and quantum mechanics, to unify the four forces of nature, to unify the four basic physical features of space, time, energy, and mass as uh, um, computational byproducts of this singular higher ordered universal computational principle. I'll explain this not in a lot of details, but a little bit uh, in a second. But what I want to say is that we've reached a point uh, which is similar to Einstein's point 100 years ago or Eddington's verification of Einstein's critical prediction. I want to I want to highlight that. So Thomas Kuhn is telling us, and Einstein actually employed that strategy very successfully. He's telling us when we have this paradigmatic shift, we have the old paradigm, which is not sufficient, has con inconsistencies, it can't explain major phenomena. We now then, we then get to the point where we understand we have to shift into a, a new paradigm. That's the paradigmatic shift phase of the development of science. We're at this paradigmatic shift phase right now. 
And in order to make that paradigmatic shift, in order to accept the new paradigm, the new God's physics paradigm, as the satisfactory and the valid, the more valid uh, paradigm of 21st century physics, which embeds within it elements and actually replicates key elements of relativity theory and quantum mechanics, again within the new universal computational formula, which is key within this new God's physics paradigm. But in order to make that shift and to accept the new paradigm, the new God's physics paradigm, as the new paradigm for 21st century physics, uh, which is more valid and includes relativity theory and quantum mechanics as special cases, in order to make that uh, change and make that um, uh, um, uh, leap or paradigmatic shift and accept that, uh, Thomas Kuhn is telling us, and Einstein actually employed that strategy, that we need to identify at least one, we can even more, but we at least uh, we, we have to at least identify one or two or three critical predictions, unique critical predictions that are unique, specific to the new paradigm, and which cannot be explained if validated. They cannot be explained by the old paradigm. So let's take as an example what Einstein and Eddington did, really just over a hundred years ago in 1919. Uh, Einstein called for cosmologists, as astrologers, to, to, to test one of his predictions, critical predictions, unique critical predictions of, re of general relativity theory regarding the, um, uh, the um, increased, much increased curvature of Mercury's perihelion pathway around the Sun due to the Sun's um, curvature of space-time. And so Einstein's prediction was 1.6 as opposed to Newton's prediction of uh, uh, 0 0.8 uh, value for the, the, um, the uh, curvature of uh, Mercury's pathway around the Sun. And when Eddington was able, during the 1919 solar eclipse, to make the measurements and actually find out that Einstein's prediction was correct, that it was in fact 1.6 arc and not 0 0.8, at that point in time, the whole scientific community accepted Einstein's general relativity theory as the new valid uh, paradigm for 20th century physics. And, you know, very uh, beautifully, you may say, Einstein's theory was shown to include uh, Newton's uh, classical mechanic as a special case. And interestingly, by the way, I wrote about it because I, I'm a great admirer of Einstein's uh, visionary work and uh, genius. Um, Einstein was seeking for uh, unifying field theory again the, um, the initial name that I gave this theory was the computational unified field theory in, in great respect for his um, uh, visionary um, uh, identification and, and quest. He spent 30 years, the second half of his illustrious scientific career, trying to find that unifying field theory. He was mocked a little bit at the time uh, because he was not able to find it, but he was um, uh, preceding his, his uh, contemporaries in, in understanding that such a unifying field theory must be found. So that's why I called initially the computational unified field theory in, in, in respect uh, or in, um, uh, regard to, in regards to his um, um, quest, visionary quest. But in any event, the idea is that this new... Uh, so, so Einstein, when Einstein was asked uh, uh, what uh, would he uh, think would be the fate of his general relativity theory, would it hold true forever? What would be the fate in 100 years, he was asked. And Einstein, very modest um, and uh, humble, he said, I, uh, I don't think that my relativity theory would uh, uh, hold uh, uh, valid forever in 100 years. I only uh, hope that general relativity theory would become a special case within a broader understanding, broader theoretical framework which is what he's done for Newtonian mechanics became and Maxwellian, Maxwellian theory became special cases within Einstein's uh, general relativity theory and he was hoping and, and realizing that his general relativity theory uh, would become a special case within the broader uh, and the more ex uh, uh, exhaustive uh, new paradigm of God's physics or the computational effect field theory. So we've reached a point now that uh, I'm calling astronomers, cosmologists, um, um, to, to carry out uh, an urgent, it's time sensitive and I'll talk about it in a second, but to carry out an urgent um, astronomical, cosmological measurement um, which, which is uh, related to a critical prediction, one of two critical predictions 
of this new God's physics paradigm. And the idea is that the same way that uh, Eddington verified Einstein's um, very um, precise prediction about the double value of uh, Mercury's perihelion curvature pathway around the Sun, uh, in the same manner, uh, I'm calling astronomers, cosmologists to carry out uh, an experimental validation, which is time sensitive, I'll talk about it in a second, uh, carry out uh, um, um, uh, a time sensitive astronomical cosmological measurement of a critical prediction of this new God's physics paradigm. And that critical prediction, I'm going to lay out that. I wrote about it. It was published now uh, in the last uh, special issue, which was uh, uh, published uh, over the last month, uh, an urgent call for cosmologists and uh, uh, astronomers uh, to validate the um, uh, God's physics critical prediction. Another article, the new solar eclipse. Um, but I'm going to lay out uh, or, or, or outline the prediction and what I'm calling astronomers and cosmologists to, to do. And obviously, uh, I also uh, list my own uh, personal uh, email so that uh, those astronomers and cosmologists can communicate with me directly, because this is of the highest importance now in uh, in in uh, uh, ensuring that science and physics, uh, 21st century physics, which is in a crisis right now, um, uh, due to the paradigmatic crisis uh, of the old paradigm of the old material causal paradigm would be able to make that paradigmatic shift into the new God's physics paradigm, which uh, would make a great service for uh, physics, 21st century theoretical physics, science, and humanity more generally. So what is this critical prediction? Uh, first, I'll state the critical prediction, then I'll explain very briefly uh, what's the rationale. Obviously, it's much more elaborate, but I'm going to just uh, highlight what's the rationale behind it and what would be the... Uh, empirical ramification, uh, the theoretical ramifications of such an empirical validation. So the critical prediction is that during the uh, um, Jewish uh, Rosh Hashanah, that's the new Jewish year, um, uh, two days time interval, during the Jewish Rosh Hashanah, um, a two days time interval, and th this year it's going to be on S September 7th and 8th, during these two days, the prediction is that during those two days and, and actually uh, in, uh, beginning from these two days and then carrying out through the next whole uh, Jewish uh, New Year, uh, there will be a non-continuous accelerated expansion or a non-continuous increase in the rate of acceleration of the universe. So that means that astronomers and cosmologists, if they would test, I'm calling astronomers and cosmologists to test the current rate of the universe's accelerated expansion, uh, that is before the 7th and 8th of September 2000, uh, uh, two, uh, 2021, and then test the accelerated rate, which I assume or predict would there will be a, a non-continuous leap, increase, significant increase. During the 7th and 8th, there will be a new accelerated rent rate of expansion, which would be much, which would be higher then the old, the, the last years until 7th, 8th of September, accelerate rate of the universe's expansion. So astronomers and cosmologists are called to test and, and measure the rate of the universe's expansion until before the 7th and 8th of September 2021. Uh, and then from the 7th, 8th and going onwards to the 9th, 10th, etc. Uh, and C, the prediction is that from the 7th, 8th and onwards, there will be a new, higher, uh, accelerated rate of the universe's expansion. And again, to the extent that that thing happens, that that measurement is verified, this is a unique critical prediction of uh, the new God's physics paradigm, which cannot be explained by either general relativity theory or quantum mechanics. It relates very much to the God's physics new cancellation of, go of dark matter, dark energy. And let me explain just in high uh, in um, uh, bullet points or just the the gist of what's the rationale behind it. Obviously, again, 50 peer-reviewed scientific articles, two special issues, books, lectures. I'm opening uh, um, uh, international uh, um, uh, physics conferences with a keynote uh, lecture about the new paradigm of uh, of uh, the 21st century, which is God's physics. But I will just explain briefly so that it makes a little bit of sense. 
the, the, the major discovery made by God's physics paradigm is that uh, it's called an a-causal computation paradigm. And the major discovery is that there exists a singular higher-ordered universal computational slash consciousness principle, UCP, which simultaneously computes all the exhaustive spatial pixels in the universe. So simultaneously, this UCP computes for every universal frame, every billionth of a brilliant, billionth, actually it's more like trillionth, it's a, a C squared divided by Planck's constant, which gives us 1.36 in the power of minus 50. So it's many trillions of times per second. So for each trillionth of a trillionth, etc., of a second, the UCP computes simultaneously all of the spatial pixels comprising the whole universe that creates a universal frame between one universal frame and, and the consecutive one uh, the whole universe, the whole frame dissolves back, dissolves back into the UCP and again the UCP creates a new uh, frame, a new picture, a new reality simultaneously of all the universe uh, and this happens at the incredible rate of again C squared divided by Planck's constant, constant which, which gives us 1.36 in the, powers, in the power of minus 50. So the discovery of this uh, singular higher ordered universal computational principle, UCP, uh, um, it uh, makes a huge difference in science. It's an a-causal computational paradigm. There cannot be a cause and effect such as the Big Bang, such as Einstein's equations, material causal assumption. Again, it's a very deep uh, uh, topic, but it makes a shift. So we understand that the UCP Universal Consciousness Principle, Computational Principle, simultaneously computes the whole universe. Another postulate of this um, uh, new God's physics paradigm is that there is a, what I call a collective human consciousness focus hypothesis. And that postulate essentially says that whenever you have a, a, a collective human consciousness focus, millions of, of human beings focusing on the Universal Computational or Consciousness Principle, uh, in religious terms, it will be uh, called God. But when you have millions of uh, uh, individuals, individual human beings, focusing on this universal computational slash consciousness principle, um, then at that, that time, there would be uh, a non-continuous expansion of the universe. And that's exactly what's happening. That's a prediction, at least, of the God's physics new paradigm. That's exactly what I predict is happening during the Jewish... Rosh Hashanah, New Year, two time, uh, two two days time interval, where millions of Jews all across the globe are praying and focusing on this universal consciousness principle, God, in religious terms, and that focus, collective human consciousness focus on the UCP, uh, creates a non-continuous expansion, non-continuous increase in the rate of the universe's expansion. And that's why, now this is unique again to God's physics paradigm, because if we were to take the equivalent or the corresponding uh, prediction of relativity theory and, and uh, general relativity theory and quantum mechanics, general relativity theory would say, okay, uh, the universe expands because of the Big Bang uh, and expands in a certain rate, accelerated rate, but nevertheless a constant rate. And uh, in the same breadth, uh, breath, uh, uh, general relativity theory would say, okay, there's dark matter, dark energy. Those are engines that are propelling the universe to expand. But that would be a continuous accelerated rate of expansion. There cannot be a non-continuous leap as God's physics paradigm predicts and that there cannot be a non-continuous leap in the accelerated expansion rate of the universe, which is associated with the collective human consciousness focus i.e., for example, the Jewish Rosh Hashanah uh, two days time interval. So we reach a point which is very critical. And this is why I'm calling astronomers, cosmologists all over the world to do what Eddington uh, did, which is a very bold move. Uh, uh, we need those bold astronomers, cosmologists to uh, pick up the glove, so to speak, and measure the rate of the universe's accelerated expansion before the 7th, 8th of September. 2021, during those two days, 7th, 8th of September, and after that. And ideally, I would suggest that astronomers, cosmologists make a measurement maybe two weeks before the 7th and 8th, and two weeks after the 7th and 8th. And, and we would then compare the, accel the, the accelerated rate of the universe's expansion. And if, in fact, the accelerated rate of the universe's expansion will make a non-continuous leap during the 7th, 8th and carry out over the next year, 
This would be an unequivocal um, a validation of the new God's physics paradigm for the 21st century. Now, why is this important? I don't, I don't want to make this uh, presentation too long. Why is this important? Just in two words. This is important because, first of all, as we stated, um, a 20th century physics, which carries out now to the 21st century, 20th, 20th and 21st centuries physics, theoretical physics, re has reached an impossible state where the two pillars are contradictory to each other where up to 95% of all the mass and energy in the universe cannot be explained. And it calls for such a paradigmatic shift. Uh, science cannot remain for long. That's what Thomas Kuhn said. That's what Einstein uh, um, um, demonstrated. Einstein, um, uh, uh, science cannot remain for long in, in the dark, so to speak. It cannot remain in a situation where you have a paradigmatic crisis, where the old paradigm doesn't work any longer. It must advance. And I gave the metaphor, by the way, in some of the presentations. Imagine uh, the evolution of the universe. You may uh, equate it to uh, um, uh, a description of the, the world uh, when we see a room, uh, when a person is born in a room, and all they know is that room. That's their whole universe. And then somebody opens the window or knocks on the door, and they open the door and they see that the room is now... Uh, embedded within a house and the house within a neighborhood and the neighborhood within a state and a country, etc. So that's why we have to move on. That's why science has to pick up the glove. As astronomers, cosmologists have to pick up the glove and test for that unique critical prediction of God's physics new paradigm of the 21st century. Um, again, this is Dr. Jehonathan Bentovich, Bentwich. Uh, with the new God's physics uh, paradigm, this book has been published by iUniverse.com. I've given a few uh, lectures online as well, and many, many articles have been published. Uh, two special issues have been published. And now I need the collaboration of uh, those bold astronomers, cosmologists, uh, to carry out that uh, critical prediction of God's physics. It's time-sensitive. Now is the time to gear up to measure that uh, unique and exciting uh, new critical prediction of God's physics paradigm. My own personal email is uh, Dr. Uh, initial Dr. Bentwich, uh, B E N T W I C H, D R B E N T W I C H, at gmail.com. And I will be very glad to collaborate and communicate with those bold astronomers and cosmologists uh, that will be um, uh, willing to uh, team up and uh, assist me and science more generally to verify this new God's physics uh, paradigm uh, of the uh, 21st century. Thank you very much.